So here's my Fallen Hero 3 plus Silver. It had its untimely death when it took a blunt hit on the side. And at that time, the lens was protected, but it just crunched on impact on this corner here. And it took quite a beating. It took out the lens. Uh, the lens protector was off somewhere. And it no longer works. And when I, you know, got the new GoPro, I thought, I have to figure out a different way to do the mounting that I've been doing. And for one, uh, I was looking at the layer lens, which is a better improvement than the stock system. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't want to spend the extra money. And one of the things that I really pride in being part of the mini quad community is that we're so innovative and we can make anything out of zip ties and double-sided tape and foam and velcro and I didn't want to just buy a ready-made product. I heard great things about the layer lens. Uh, I, I'm not saying anything bad about that. I've never personally tried it but it just I just didn't want to buy one because for one when I was thinking about what I was gonna do we've got the stock GoPro case and really if you look at it it's a layer lens right? It's got the rest of the body attached to it, but essentially the layer lens is sitting right here and it came free with their GoPro. And unless you really use this case for water extreme sports, it just sits in her bag. And I thought, I already have two of these now, one that came with each of these. So let's experiment to see what we can do to make this work in our mini quad. Now we've all sort of on our first mini quads flown with this setup where we just stick it on a frame and we shoot. And it's great that it protects it and it's ease of mounting it and removing the GoPro and, and everything, but it comes with a bit of a weight issue. Now we've sort of evolved from that as a community and we've been very innovative with foam and we cut a wedge and that gets mounted on top of the top plate and on top of that sits our GoPro and we get two straps and one goes around the front and the other one goes around the edge and the lens gets protected with either the stock or the layer lens. Now it works really well to protect the lens and but sometimes like when it gets hit in the wrong spot it still gets damaged and when I was faced with trying to buy a new layer, layer lens or some sort of protection, that came about this project. So let's first see what sort of weights we're dealing with, right? So let's get our scale. And we will see the dreaded stock case configuration. But let's look at what we have. This case in a stock configuration comes in at 93 grams. Then we'll do a comparison on our foam, our two straps, and the lens protector. And this setup, we're looking at at around 16 grams, maybe 18, uh, depending on you know the kind of Velcro straps that you end up using or how much of a, a big foam pad that you're, you've uh, cut. So we're looking at around 16, 18 grams versus the 93 grams on a stock case. So if we can get this case to come close to what this is, or maybe even halfway, then, you know, an extra 30 grams on top to have more protection on your GoPro, I think that's a pretty good thing. And it's worth investigating because, like, we've got it. We've got tools, we've got the time, and we love to create, right, as a, as a mini quad pilot. So let's see how much we can make this case get reduced and if it's a functional thing and a compromise of, of a little bit of extra weight to give it more protection. So that's what this tutorial today is going to be about. Uh, let's have some fun and cut up the stock case and, and we'll try to make our own layer lens. Okay, so right away we're going to decide that we're not going to need the back piece because it's extra weight and similar to the layer lens, we're going to be using a Velcro, Velcro strap to put the GoPro inside. 
which then also means that we don't need this top piece here, right? So let's start with removing these. And the back comes off pretty easily because uh, you just pull it that way, so in that direction. So right away, we've taken off a lot of weight. You check that aside. The top clasp is no longer needed, so we can take that out as well. Uh, you just have to pull out on the side and slide out the bottom. And now that is gone as well. So we're left with the face of the case. And if we look at how the GoPro sits in it right now, there it is, right? And all we need is a strap to keep it in place. Now, yeah, you could probably wrap a strap around the entire unit, but you know, we're a little better than that, right? We can, we can be creative. Uh, we can probably put in like slits here and have the Velcro strap already attached to the case. And that would be pretty cool. Now, these buttons are pretty nice, but uh, do we really need them? Let's see what they do, actually. Wow, there's a pin that actually goes in and touches the button of the GoPro. And I'm just imagining, like, you know, it's sort of bumped out there. Imagine, like, if a rock hits that with enough force. That's putting a lot of pressure on that button. And same with the ones on the top and the one on the side. I'm thinking I don't, I don't really need those, right? So let's remove those altogether. So what I'm doing is I'm removing these clips that are holding the button mechanism in place. And I'm pushing on the side here, on the button, which makes the, uh, the clip get sort of pushed out from the side, right? And I'm using a needle nose and I'm just going to grab them and I'm going to pull them out. The button comes out like that. And yeah, so what you're left with is a very small hole and the protection mechanism. So what I'm thinking is that I'm going to bore out this hole larger so I can use uh, a little pointed device to hit the buttons. That way it's not going to trigger accidentally when something hits it. But it also, this lip here, if I can keep that, will provide extra strength and, and rigidity in this corner. So if something does hit it, it's still pretty strong. Next we're going to be removing the lens protector just to get it out of uh, harm's way because we're going to be doing a lot of cutting with the Dremel. So we're going to be using a, a Torx bit. Uh, this is the T4 and we're going to use that to remove those and get the protection out of the way. So let's get that. So once the four screws are out, uh, the front just comes out. And if it hasn't already done so, there's a rubber seal that sits on the front, and you'll have to take that off as well. So let's put that and the four screws in a very safe place so we don't lose it or damage them. So I finished the first hole, and it looks pretty good. I'm using this uh, Dremel bit here, and it's one of my favorite for making holes larger. And that's what I'm using. And let's do the other ones. Now I've started this side already where I've used this bit on the Dremel and I've plunged in and I've starting to route out the slot for the Velcro and I think it's going pretty well. So let's keep, keep going at that. Now you want to take it slow and you want to smooth out the edges. So there's our first Velcro slit 
and we're gonna match it on this side as well. Okay, so let's start that. So here is our modified mount. Uh, we've put in the holes for zip ties and we've gotten rid of the clip and we've made something that was very bulky into something very minimal and you can noticeably feel the weight loss. So this is a thing of the past. Now as well uh, we've trimmed off the handle to get rid of extra weight so we are now using this and it's very convenient and we just use a screwdriver now to tighten it in and again a lot of weight savings there as well so I've gone ahead and I've mounted one of our uh, mount systems on the TOW 260 and you can see its use of zip ties attaching the mount to the frame so let's see how everything uh, looks together. I've gone ahead and I've made a special one for the toad. This is using the blackout housing. So it's got that nice black finish. Uh, it's going to match the color scheme on our toad very well. 
So just the same as our other one, uh, we've done the slits, we bored out the holes for the buttons, and yeah, I'm excited for this. So let's put it together. So one of the reasons why I like the stock system is that you can set the angle quite easily and you don't have to, you know, uh, recut a new piece of foam. It's done pretty well. So even when you're flying, uh, if you've had one flight and you want to change the angle, it's quite easy because it's just a matter of untightening the, the screw and then getting that angle just the way it is. So if you're just beginning out, uh, you might start with no angle because you're doing a lot of hovering. But then as you get better, you will angle it back for doing speed. And I love this mount just for that, that reason alone, is that the versatility of, of getting them on and off. So that's tightened, and let's take a look. Wow, that turned out pretty well. The black out housing on that GoPro goes pretty well on that frame. Nice. So the second one, the original plastic clear case that we were working on, I turned into something else where I've taken off the bottom. So let's take a closer look at that. It's the same as we started. It's got the, the buttons bored out. It's got the Velcro slits on the side. But now I've taken off the bottom. And let's uh, assemble it with the GoPro and, and we'll show you how that comes comes to use. Okay, so let's get that Velcro strap in. So I like to put the smooth side on the bottom because that's the side that the GoPro sits against. And that goes on top. And this slides in. And I pull on the straps. Get that nice and tight, and then it connects to itself. So this is our second homemade layer lens, where the bottom's being cut, and essentially you can use this on any way that you use a regular GoPro with a layer lens or a lens protector, because the bottom is flat. And here's our minimal homemade layer lens on the mounted on the. Epic Mini 280 Turbo, and that's like fully protected now, and it looks really nice. And let's see what it sits at now. 55 grams from 93. That's pretty good, because remember, just using the foam and the straps, it was 19, no, 16 to 18 grams. So that's not so bad. One last thing to do is to do a final weigh on the most minimal layer lens. And this one sits at 32 grams. So we've got two things that we've done with this homemade layer project. We've got the full case that uses the minimal GoPro mount. And we've got the minimal case that we can use using the traditional strapping method. So I hope this has been helpful and thanks for watching.